Welcome back. My name is Kit. My name is Madison. And I'm Steve. I'm, wow, my voice. Ah! You've been smoking? Scratchy. I've been, I've been hitting the wacky tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Poopy Butthole joined the podcast. Ooh-wee. I'm Steve. <laughs> I'm Teeve. Hey, Beth. <laughs> I love Mr. Poopy Butthole. I bet you do. (laughs) (laughs) So we're back, baby. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Join the family. We're really chill here. We're just a bunch of bros and chicks that just hang out and talk TVs and films. That's right. Uh, We're discussing Lost. And so if you don't know how that might work, it's a show from 2004. What are you talking about? What was going on? Yeah, I know. But Madison and I have never seen it before. And so we thought that'd be fun. And in fact, our listeners thought that'd be fun. It was kind of their their idea. Mm -hmm. Steve... Longtime Lost fan. Mm, a uh, real Losty. A real Losty, mm. if you will. I bought his Blu-ray box set of all six seasons off of him years ago. So it's, I'm finally putting those to use, which is not true. It's a lie. I watch it on Hulu and I just was, look at them. I was <laughs> honestly going to be like, are you legit watching on the Blu-rays nope. or are you watching on the Hulus? One day Hulu kept crashing and I just <laughs> kept trying it. And you Instead were looking, of getting did, off my couch. Did you go and gaze at the, the six box sets? They're not even far. I just like looked at them like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to get off the couch today? There's, my, there's, no. a, there's a 4K. There's no benefit to me getting up. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, that that's a thing. So that's what we're doing. And what we do is we, re, we recap each episode line by line, baby. And then we have some fun games at the end. We'll go into the detail of that later. But in the meantime. There's some sick, sick holiday streaming things merch you may or may not be privy to. I think it's too late as you listen to this. Uh, yeah, but you can still buy it. You can still buy it, but you won't get it by Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are awesome uh, holiday sweatshirts and holiday T-shirts if you want the T-shirt version. Uh, West River Printing does all of our merch. They're incredible. If you need, uh, if you have merch needs, could not recommend them more highly. If you like the designs of all of our stuff. They do that. That's part of what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, without very much prompting from us at all. And so they're they're brilliant. Yeah, we're just like, can, can you, we literally prompted, can you make a holiday shirt yeah. that says happy streaming on it? And they're like, here's art. Boom. <laughs> here, <Literally>. here is <laughs> just, art. Yeah. There it is. And then we like, I think we asked them one time, like, hey, we're thinking of making a lost shirt. And then they made that lost shirt that Madison's wearing right now. Look at that, ba- that bad boy. That's right. I'm not positive. I can't prove that West River Printing is not, in fact, Banksy. Uh, <laughs> I'm not making that claim, but yeah. I can't prove that they're not. Yeah. So it's a we, it's a really it's a pickle. Yeah, it it's is. A pickle. It's a volatile time in the art world mm-hmm. with West mm-hmm. <laughs> West River Printing. Uh, you can email the show at streamingthingspod at gmail dot com and uh, go to patreon dot com slash streaming things. We're going to spread a little holiday cheer our way by supporting the show oh, financially. Oh. <laughs> That's what we are. <laughs> but not for nothing. You get ho, hot, sweet, ho, bonus content. Ho. That's ho. right. Um, and you get it. What's, what's the last episode that they, they could get and, and only get on Patreon? I forget. I know this month it's going to be most likely Gremlins. Knives Out. Knives Out. Oh. Mm-hmm. Wonderful episode. Delightful time that we had talking about that movie. So there's extra you stuff. You see Kit in a knitted sweater. Yes, that I will be returning for post haste. <laughs> oh no! Post haste. Oh, no. He was not a fan of a sweater. Yeah, no. you buy it. From- I don't look good in it, which is most important. But also, it doesn't feel very good. Is it like? And people keep saying she- you're supposed to wear an undershirt, dummy. I did. It still touches my forearms and my neck. Very itchy. Yeah. I get it. Wool. You're supposed to wear Under Armour, idiot. No wonder they're <laughs> supposed to wear a turtleneck. No Duh. wonder. No wonder the Irish drink so much because <laughs> they're trying to dull the pain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're trying to numb. <laughs> oh. numb and the, the sheep knitting. are just in the corner laughing. <laughs> sheep. Laughter. That's how they mock you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's talk about Lost episode eleven. All the best cowboys have daddy issues. AKA me. <laughs> Madison, I am the is best a cowboy. cowboy. She's a cowboy with daddy issues. Can we cue the Kid Rock song? I'm a cowboy, <laughs> baby. No, <laughs> oh, I thought you had that dialed up. I will not. You have the laser for Kit. That needs to be mine. Yeah, this this is a no Kid Rock zone. <laughs> Whatever. I put your picture away. <laughs> What about diggy, if, the, if there's any Cheryl Crow involved? It doesn't do anything more we'll, for we'll you. We'll just put Cheryl Crow in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so all the best cowboys have daddy issues. I loved this episode. That's what spurred the conversation of me speed speed running lost because I'm like, God damn it, we finally got to the hatch. I don't know. What, I don't know what the hatch is. 
Madison, have mm. do you are you aware of the hatch just as a vague no entity? Is that All what right. is that what this episode alluded to at the end? So yeah. anytime the anytime I've talked about Lost in the past decade, it is somebody in the crowd has always said the fucking hatch. It, it's just like it's a thing. It's like a a linchpin of this fandom. And so I was really excited, like, oh, this. So it was a little bit spoilery, I guess, in the sense that, like, normally I would you just knew be, there was a hatch coming. I'd be merely intrigued. Whereas in this point, I was like, oh, this is a, th- a big thing. This is the hatch. Oh. It's going to be a whole thing. See, um, I didn't get that big. I didn't. I had no knowledge. I didn't even know it was going to be a quote unquote hatch. I just thought, mm-hmm. oh, what is this like metal entity? I wasn't ground? consciously waiting for the hatch. OK. But as soon as the flashlight clinked, I was like, oh, 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 oh. I looked at my dog shit. like, buddy. It's so funny. So in, in my notes, I made sure to write down like, don't don't say the hatch in turn. And just in case they don't yeah. know what it is. Oh, yeah. So I'm happy that you're like the fucking hatch is here yeah. because. <laughs> As someone who's watched the show, as soon as that flashlight hit, I'm like, the fucking hatch is here. You didn't know it was coming this episode? I thought it was going to be either this episode or next because, uh, I, well, I don't really want to spoil too much, but just in the pairing of two characters showing oh, up, okay. I'm like, oh, the hatch is coming up because there's these two par- these mm-hmm. two characters are paired up. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, the hatch uh, you know, might be a little bit of a spoiler, but a hatch is like a real big like season one mystery thing like like from here this point on it's it's safe to say that the hatch is a very important like what instead of what's in the box what's in the hatch what's in the hatch hatch? so very exciting i also i did love this episode it's one of my favorite episodes of the 11 that we've watched Mm. so far um also i think matthew fox did a really good job i think a lot of the emotional uh cadence of this episode was done really well especially paired with his concern for claire i think they did a great the writers did an incredible job of kind of explaining his mania and trying to find claire with what had happened in his past you know Mm -hmm. um and i don't typically this might be sacrilegious but i I don't typically like matthew fox's portrayal of jack very much as we we kind of joke a lot but i legitimately don't like the character very much Mm -hmm. Uh, but i i did in this episode so that was good but i also laughed inappropriately at a lot of the conflict in this episode uh and you'll see why i made i made a whole thing about it in my notes uh, but i can't wait <laughs> but most importantly i i'm kind of curious why are they not worried about the monsters anymore and i know the writers are all over the place there's a lot going on in this island but like we in the the whole opening two or three episodes there was like this whole thing like there's fucking dinosaurs or something eating us and There's now, a fucking polar bear there. Yeah. And now they seem to run off into the jungle without a fear in really, the world really. of specifically monsters. It's just well, not, it's even more so than monsters. Now there's like strange people abducting pregnant ladies. Yeah. 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 But like that's not even on their minds. They're yeah. like, make sure we got uh, we don't we don't want to get lost. Let's <laughs> mark the trees uh, <laughs> with the red shirts and stuff like that. But nobody's worried seemingly about a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, which I feel like they should be. Uh, that's my only like nitpick. Hey man, they haven't seen that thing since their first night. Yeah. It's been at least two weeks it's since they landed sailing. there. Yeah. It's been great. That's old news, baby. That monster moved on to the other side of the continent. We, yeah. Is it a continent? Who knows how we big know. this island is? We don't know. It could be the size of New Jersey. It could be the size of Greenland. That we would be know. funny if it, it's just like a resort is like three miles in and they're like, Oh, what do we do? There's others here. Like Saeed comes back. Guys, the French are here. Yeah. Literally. There's a really great resort. Yeah. <laughs> the French own it. Yeah. They four season. Saeed, you look well fed and showered. Yeah. Oh, I had a great time. Yeah. It's wonderful. Sauna. I was drinking some G and E's on the G and T's on this, on the beach for a couple of days. And the E's. And the E's. That's ecstasy. Yes. (laughs) It's a French party. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going to happen. I was tortured with how much alcohol they gave me. The French don't party. They just judge. Um, yeah, they say, that's their party. It was the one time I was Look at, at that a guy's shirt. The one time I was at a resort, an international resort on the beach. Yeah, we all, they all, every the one of us, me, us Americans, the Germans, the British, the Germans, uh, the Finns. We all got together and we made fun of the French people. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. It brings people together. <laughs> Judgment. Yep. yep. But yep. but Madison, what did you think of episode eleven? I. I liked it. Um, I don't think I am in in love with it as much as you are. Um, I definitely think the previous two episodes hold higher in in my mind. Um, 
I kind of had the opposite feeling towards Jack. He was kind of annoying me, which I don't know if that's just like deep down feelings I've always had. Cause he is like you, you mentioned, uh, you, you like love to hate him kind of. And I felt like it was just continuing in this episode, but I see your thought in terms of like, oh, his having to make that like moral decision. Like, do I choose my dad or do I do the right thing? Um, so I see that. Um, but truly I feel like he was, I think in the moment of what Locke was trying to do with finding Claire and Charlie and stuff like that made more sense to me. And in my eyes, Jack was just being like, oh, I need to be the hero again. And so I, which I understand is like complemented with his backstory. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I just was like the, the logistics of the situation. I just was like, Jack, you're being not like, you're just like messing it all up anyway. But, um, I, I like this episode for the, the big spin at the end. Like what is this metal object in the ground? I had no context for the hatch. Um, to me, I just was like, is there like a uh, Power Rangers uh, mm. <laughs> a robot underneath in the ground. Oh, a, Zor a Zordon or uh, <laughs> what are those? A that? Zorg. Zorg? Is it Zorg? Something like that. Something Mega like no, that. Zord. No, Mega Zord. You know what I mean? I was, that's tuning, they... I was tuning into my uh, Power Rangers Turbo movie because <laughs> that's, that's my favorite Power Rangers movie. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I had a good time with this with this movie. I liked the flashbacks with uh, Jack's dad because we hadn't really ventured back into that in a minute. Um, and Jack's dad sucks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good to, good to know where he comes from and I guess why he's so fucked up, but, um, like yeah. all good cowboys are. Yeah. yeah. And I thought like, I, I was very curious based off of the title of the episode as well. I was like, Oh, what are we, we can dive into. Daddy like issues. I like it feels like to me that is like a diary entry of mine. Like <laughs> the title <laughs> of my diary is that. Yeah. Um, I just saw Cowboys and Daddy and clicked play like mm. in a rush. Yeah. There were neither, who, there were, who there pops, were no cowboys at all in, in your this head? episode. Who pops in your head when you hear Cowboy Daddy? Uh Sawyer. Sawyer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Of all these characters, yeah, it's Sawyer. For me at least. Yeah. I don't say anything cowboyish about Jack at all. Mm. Uh, what about you? You obviously disagree. Uh, I was going to say Sharon Stone. <laughs> oh, that's cheating. <laughs> From Quick and the Dead, but. You mean like who in the world? In the world, pops yeah. Pops in my head with Cowboy Daddy? Sam Elliott. Mm, ah, that's, a, that's good a good one. Still got one good arm to hug you with, darling. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Can't top that. Sam Elliott's good. No. Remember the the when we did Tombstone, he was like, I still got one good dick beaten arm. <laughs> yeah, dude, our Tombstone episode is legendary to oh, us. I love that uh, one. Such a good one. To oh, us. Man. Steve, what did you anyway. think of episode 11? Uh, I think I'm kind of in Madison's camp with this one. So this this episode, I think, uh, is really fun in that it's moving the plot forward. We get to see the hatch. It's like really important. Uh, you finally get to see some really fun. There's a lot of really fun side interactions with side characters in this. You get like a Sawyer and Walt scene, which is great. Walt and Hurley. Uh, Michael's trying to step up and do some stuff on his own. Boone and Locke is a really good pairing as well that you wouldn't think would be as fun as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, really, because Boone hasn't done anything in yeah. ten, 10 episodes. Done shit. Uh, but the thing that... I, I know like, like Kit, you love the Jack stuff in this episode and I love half of the Jack stuff in this episode. All the flashback stuff is great. Like the, the conflict with Jack and his father, Christian is very well done. I think that character works in a hospital setting and just how conflicted he is with turning his father in. I think that's a really good story yeah. and they do it really well. Yeah. I want to see like the house ER Jack yeah. show. He's still out of breath constantly. Yeah. Signing forms. <laughs> asking Andrea, the nurse, like, is my father drunk again? Yeah. <laughs> yes, he is, sir. Uh, the breathalyzer. Uh, but I feel like in terms of episodes where they connect the trauma that a character's having in the past to what's happening currently in this in the story at present, I feel like this was the biggest stretch of like. Like there's a scene where Jack's literally like, I'm not going to let him get away with it again as they're chasing Ethan. And it's like, come on. Like there's, like, on, I don't man. believe that this particular situation is reminding you of your drunk dad, which is fine. Like I don't need them to connect, but the way they tried to connect, it was just a little eye rolly. And I just thought his absolute mania in the present was 
just just odd and like ramped up to a degree that was so strange. And then there are some like really unintentionally funny scenes in this episode. Yes. Well, and they're, they're almost all of them have to deal with Jack specifically and what Matthew Fox is doing acting wise. But again, it's weird because all the flashback stuff crushing. Like his acting is crushing. This is the actually stuff. the least amount of flashbacks that we've gotten ever, I think, which is part of what I liked so much about this episode. I want the fucking present plot line mm -hmm. to rush through. And like when they cut back to the past, it is for the most part, very brief, except yeah. for like, I think the big um, board review scene. Uh, where things take a turn. Um, I think I can say that confidently. But for me, it works. It's not so much that, um, and we don't have to harp on this. It either works for you or it doesn't. But I really think they, they, they not only show you that Jack blames himself for the death of this particular patient uh, in the instance where he's kind of enabled his father and mm -hmm. failed to save her. So it's a two-pronged self-blame. But also he has a tendency to blame himself because his father it was admittedly extremely abusively hard on him. That's mm -hmm. why I made you like this. You're the most talented surgeon, young surgeon in the city. Please don't fire me. And it's because I beat you so hard. You Please know? don't fire me. Um, yeah. And so we we know that about Jack. And that's kind of, he doesn't have the hero complex, complex that we, the annoying one that we thought he had as much as he has the weight on his shoulders, right? Because mm -hmm. he's probably, because I suffer from that, like my, I remember being like seven years old and my mom, I think I've told this before, but my mom was like severely bipolar and my dad was in jail in and out a lot. And she'd come up to me when I was like seven, I'd be like coloring and she'd be like, how are we going to make rent this month? You know what I mean? And I'm mm. like, huh, we could sell this. How, do, how much my crayons going for? You know, like it, <laughs> I shouldn't have fucking been worried about that. And so, and it's. It, you know, she had mental illnesses. I don't blame her. I've like, I've gotten past the point where I'm like angry at her, but like, I know that I'm like fucked up from that. Like there's an amount of uh, anxiety and pressure that I feel that's not real because of stuff like that, being involved in adult issues at such a young age. Um, and I saw that in Jack and like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm like, Jack's starting to make a lot more sense. It's not that he's like, oh, I'm so cool. I got to save him. It's just that he feels a sense of responsibility to everyone around him at all times. And he blamed himself for Claire because he literally told her, you're delusional. Here's mm -hmm. a sedative, right? So that's yeah. the blame that he, that decision is what he thinks is, you know, if, he, if I had protected her and believed her, then they wouldn't have had the opportunity to snatch her. Mm -hmm. So I, I believed his mania because it's like, because I was very annoyed when Locke said, you're the only physician here. You need to go back. I'm like, that's the logical choice. And he has really no skills to help this uh, search party. So mm -hmm. I was really annoyed that Jack was like, are you done? Can we just go now? Uh, but like, it makes sense that he's like, can you imagine like feeling that guilt? You're, you're the one that sent mm -hmm. Claire away. And then just going back and sitting and waiting to hear if John found her mm -hmm. awful. Definitely not doing that. I'm not doing that either. Mm -hmm. And you said, uh, Madison, you talked a lot about like Jack really annoying, kind of fucking things up throughout this whole search, which I agree, except he was right. He's the only reason Charlie's alive. You know, the trail that he chose to go down is where he actually found one of the people. Mm -hmm. um, and Charlie would have just slowly been strangled, you know, strangled if mm -hmm. he, had he not shown up. Like John never found anybody, right? As we know, we see that. So if Jack had not been that way, Charlie's dead. That's the only consequence we know for sure right now, but that's bad enough. That's enough to forgive him, I think. It's like, oh, it worked. You know what I mean? The, the writers chose to make him correct. Sure. It, yeah, it all works narratively. I'm just saying, like, there are choices in there. I feel like they're unnecessarily trying to tie the story of the present to the past in ways that are hokey. Like, specifically, I'm thinking of, the, like, you're not getting away with it again. Like, all right, man, you're not. <laughs> this isn't I get that right. I, like that that line in particular really annoys me and then also the thing that like I don't I'm not even annoyed about Jack like being like hey I I I let Claire down like mm -hmm. I understand that part of his mania the thing that I get annoyed with is when he's like how about a little honesty Kate huh he just comes out of Kate out, out of nowhere yeah never like, attack yeah. my girl Kate first off what the off. fuck are you doing to Kate bro yeah. I'm with you there <laughs> um I also think uh I feel you, but like that kind of feeling hit me way harder with Saeed's episode where it was like, it's all torture everywhere we look, you know, like <laughs> that was a little more ham hammy with them trying to tie in his past with like, can he just avoid torture for a little while? Like it's, right. um, than this was, but I understand what you're saying. But can Jack avoid being a doctor a little while? That was his job, man. Saeed's job was, was torture. torture. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just like Shannon's job is beach, Saeed's <laughs> job is torture. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> well, let's get let's get into it. We open the episode uh, with Jack uh, freaking out about Ethan when he's being told by Hurley that everything is uh, that he's not on the manifest. Right? They realize Charlie and Claire are missing. They all take off running. <laughs> uh, John Locke is so happy to run because again he can use his legs. He he be sprinting. So he just he be going. Part, I, th- I, I think a huge part of him, yeah, a huge part of him running is always <laughs> like, yes. look what I can do. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> he, he, I, the only thing he's missing is a full head of hair so he can feel the wind blowing through it. That's yeah. all he needs. I feel his pain. <laughs> <laughs> they find Claire's bag because uh, she was moving to, to join Shannon at Beach. And uh, <laughs> they, they realize Claire and Charlie have been taken. Uh, and Jack starts shouting, Claire, are you hiding? <laughs> and then I I love this like super dramatic like we need a dramatic um lock pause <laughs> right before the commercial break. The like, Jack, wait. Lost. <laughs> and yeah. then you would probably be sold like detergent and bounty yeah. paper towels. And then you would come back like, you know, I think they went through the woods. Free <laughs> credit <laughs> report.com. Yeah. Right. Probably that one. Yes. Um <laughs> <laughs> Some JG Wentworth, and we're yeah. back to oh, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Some Blake Maislin. It's my money, and I want it now. Yeah, four, four, four. <laughs> I miss those ads. Mm-hmm. I always remember the the lady who opens up the window. It's my money, and I want what? it now. Yeah, <laughs> they just wanted it. It's or, their money. Or the Aflac. Aflac. The Aflac. duck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you get all these Gecko. ads. Classics. It, like John Locke literally was like, shh, ads are coming. <laughs> <laughs> Buy these things. And when they come back, John uh, is basically telling Jack he needs to calm down. They need to reassess the situation. Uh, he's starting to, to to parse what Saeed was saying. You know, they might be other people. And Jack's like, fuck all that. Let's just go get them. And John's like, no, hey, hey, man, I don't just know tell- where they're at. I'm just telling you what the ground's telling me. That's right. I'm just telling you. The, ground <laughs> the ground's spoke talking to me. to me. John. It's a gossipy bitch, but it only will talk to me. <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, and then Jack just takes off running again. And then we get uh, the flashback. It's where it starts. Uh, back in time. Back. Yes. <laughs> I was going to do exactly what you just did. And then was like, don't do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's my bit. <laughs> I'm an island boy. Uh, surgery. It's Jack in surgery with his team. The patient flatlines. He's unable to bring her back. Call it, Jack. And it's some older man. I didn't realize that was his dad. I don't know if you're supposed to, because I know we have had previous dad stuff. Mm-hmm. I didn't recognize well, it. I he's, didn't, yeah, he's I got didn't the, the surgical either. mask on. So Even when he took it down, I was like, who's this prick? Oh, well, because we there really wasn't a moment that we saw. I know there was. I, I think there was, but it's been since we had the strike. It's been like nine episodes. Oh, yeah. Of and so show, uh, and but also us. to us, it's been like five months. So, yeah. And so I didn't realize it. I have it marked later where I was like, that's his dad. Uh, I think is oh yeah, it's the next uh, past flashback. Mm-hmm. But it fucking worked for me because as soon as he says dad, I was like, oh, oh this Ooh. is T. Oh, shit. Um, so, but, but the older man who was later revealed to me to be his dad says, you call it, call the death, right? And he's like, you call it, bitch. And then that's kind of where that scene ends. Back in the present. In his face. Kate, <laughs> Kate is mad uh, at Locke that Jack went off alone and Locke's like, I'm getting my stuff. He's slow as fuck. I'll catch I got legs. He's I'll catch idiot. up to he's, him. He's an idiot. I can he's run like a gazelle fucking, now. <laughs> he's going around in fucking circles. That oh, cracked me the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. oh the circle god. thing later? Yes. Yeah. I love, of, oh my god. Instead so of a search funny. grid, you're doing circles, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love petty John Locke. Just like, he's really angry throughout this episode. Awesome. Who's John Locke? Yeah. I don't think he's angry. I think he's just kind of like, he's, he's, yeah, he's a little flummoxed. Like, Come on, man. My job is hunt. Your job is doctor. Shannon's job is beach. Yeah. Just let us stay in our lanes, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It's making sense. Uh, but then also he realized Jack, who hates it, supposedly insists on being the leader. And every time he asserts himself, John's like, okay. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, but yeah, Kate's mad that they went off alone. So they go off together. Boone wants to join. So does Michael. But they're like, mm, you're going to slow us down, which was kind of random. Like why? Yeah, I didn't How really is he understand any the, less skilled than Boone. At, I didn't understand the rejection there, if I'm being honest. But also I'm realizing I don't like Michael. Uh oh. at this moment in time I don't. Like I understand he's estranged from his son and he's feeling a lot of that pressure, but it's like he doesn't seem interested in uh being a father. Every time the writers show him, it's denying spending time with his son. Well, right? I mean, we do learn that, you know, I mean, Walt even mentions saying he has another dad. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure yeah. that's, you know, playing well, we, into it. I think we learned a, a few episodes ago that Walt had never even met Michael until Michael came to Australia to pick him up and be his dad. And they were on their way mm-hmm. home. So they literally like have never met until like a week before this plane crash. Oh. So they are incredibly estranged. And, um, but he seems to have no paternal instincts. Uh, and this scene specifically, it just it really annoyed me. He wants to go on the search party, which is, well, I'll talk about why that's a problem in a second. And they're like, no, no, no. But then they say no for no reason. I'll grant that. Um, or, I mean, they could, they could have said no because they're like, you have a kid. Like, I don't know if people are picking up on like his lack of his inability to like be a father, but maybe they said no yeah, for if, the better good of him being if with people Walt. are kidnapping members of this party. That's my standpoint. You know, Walt wants to help too. He's got the dog and, and Michael's like, no, nah. And then, uh, fine. I'll start my own fucking search party. And John's like, all right, fine. We're going North. He goes South, which he knows is a pointless journey. Mm-hmm. Well, that, yeah. That's funny. So <laughs> he, the way he does it, he, 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 it's shuts, great. he shuts him down so well. Like John Locke is such a good, it's a fantastic idea. Yeah, <laughs> hey man, that's great. Go, go South. We're going North. Yeah. They fail to understand. John is from a corporate world, mm-hmm. right? With petty, uh, cubicle rivalries. He's been trained in this kind of arguing <laughs> laser where you're, focus. We're not uh, actually saying anything that'll get you written up or start, you know what I mean? But you're being so all, fucking all petty. All the jabs yeah. in the back of his brain. Mm-hmm. But Michael's Don't tell instinct, John Locke what he can't do, <laughs> but John Locke will tell you what you can do. Michael's instinct should be to protect Walt. Oh, so members of our party are getting randomly kidnapped and God knows what. I should probably be near my son. Yeah. That's what I would do. Logic would dictate that if they're kidnapping the pregnant woman, maybe they want children. Yeah. Yeah. So protect the child. Like if me and Mason are on this island, my son Mason, uh, and he's Walt's age exactly. And they're forming these search parties and stuff. I'm not going to say, Mason, stay with Hurley. I'm journeying into the jungle. Mm-hmm. which I'm 90% positive is a direction that's pointless <laughs> that John was just fucking with me. And I'm so stubborn. You know what I mean? I'm going to, yeah. he's going to be glued to my side. And I don't know. That's I, just, I was just really put off by Michael do, in this whole decision-making process here. I do want to know who were Michael's top men because he's like, I got five good men ready to follow me into the forest. Yeah, and they're all like red shirts. <laughs> like we've never seen them. I'm assuming. I'm sure one of them's, uh, was it Steve and Lance? He any money mode right. the, the, the hypochondriac guy from a couple episodes ago. Oh yeah, what's his yeah. name? I don't fucking remember. Uh, yeah, he's over there getting into the meds. Will for we sure. ever see him again? Who knows? He's probably <laughs> covered in a very serious jungle rash. Absolutely, hundred percent. Jack was just dismissive of. Um, but yeah, and it, that happened. And then we cut back to Jack. He's running around and he seems lost. lost. I wrote that same joke. <laughs> well, that's what I wrote that joke six times, I think. <laughs> and it, like I capitalized lost every time. <laughs> it's so great. We got back to the past. Back in time. We're back to the dead patient. Uh, we got who I kept calling the prick coworker. <laughs> and we realized that he cut her hepatic artery. So the, the prick screwed it up and that's why she died. And that's why he's so mad. Um, and then we realized... Or I realized everybody else already knew it's his dad. <gasps> but it really worked for me. That realization moment was great. And daddy. It, yeah. It's the, the daddy These issues. are the daddy issues. Daddy issues. I was like, oh, title of the show. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the nurses came and got Jack and told her, uh, told him that his dad's hands were shaking mm-hmm. during the surgery. Why would they be shaking? You ask. They wouldn't be actually. Mm. Because they shouldn't be. If he's an alcoholic and he's drinking, he would actually be really steady handed. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shaking is usually indicative of uh, withdrawal uh, as far as tremors when it comes to alcohol. Mm. But I guess he was just overshot the mark and he was drunk. I don't think that makes you shake, but it's definitely not a good time to do surgery. No. Uh, Fuck yeah. Well, I think it was just like they needed a a key word in there to make the nurse suspect something was wrong. Can you imagine drunk surgery? Like you're just mid slice and you're like, I'm fucking hungry. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, what? Can, can you guys DoorDash some McDonald's real quick? Hey, turn on some fucking Zeppelin right now. That'd be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, before we start the, the surgery, I just want to say I fucking love you guys. He starts air guitaring <laughs> with the scalpel and shit. Check this <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls out the intestine. <laughs> oh, with the intestine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys mind if I crash you tonight? <laughs> he's like, I'm so tired. Andrew, you look, gonna... you look really hot. What? If, yeah, instead of like his hand shaking, what if she said, what if like one of the nurses came and got me? 
She said your breast smelled like Jim Beam. <laughs> like just like yeah. something very over. Yeah. He said you sent her a dick pic. Are you drunk again? <laughs> your pants weren't on. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, yeah, yeah, he was just doing surgery with his dick out. <laughs> Andrew didn't Andrew didn't get me. You drunk dialed me and then asked me how to do a surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to do a surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, my boy. You sent me a selfie with the patient and her chest cavity open. He bah, was doing. He was doing, <laughs> he was doing the operation game. Yeah. Prior. <laughs> oh, sides. You handed out a tray of Jello shots to the surgery team. <laughs> Who does Jello shots? Brought, what are you five? You brought in a bucket of them. <laughs> <laughs> you were handing them out to patients in their rooms. Yes, but here's the medicine you need. There you go. <laughs> Look, son. It's cherry. <laughs> just because you're a dud at the party does not mean I have to be. Listen, Jack, cause, just because you're not fucking cool like your dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, but they find yeah. Jack and John blames himself because he's been like hanging out with Ethan. And he's like, he's a better tracker than I ever dreamed of being. You're never going to find him, Jack. You're, you're the doctor. Go play doctor. I'll play hunter. And Jack's like, mm, no. And uh, we cut back to Michael, who's bitching about being left behind. Walt defends Locke like... He knows how to do all kinds of cool shit. He's better at backgammon than you. And he brought knives. You don't have knives because you're a bitch. And he loves me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael's like, uh, definitely don't talk to him anymore. Don't don't listen to him. Don't trust him. Mm. Got that? I'm Got I'm that? a I'm a warrior too. And I love that when they walk off and her looks like, you know. I'm something of a warrior myself back home. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about World of Warcraft, which okay. I respect. He's like, I'm level 62. Honestly, deal. though, if I if I found myself on an island and, you know, my chances of survival were not looking great, I would make some shit up about my life. Oh, for sure. Oh, I'm, I'm with Kate on that. I would. Yeah. It's like I'm a Oscar winning actress. Well, they <laughs> like would know that. Like that. You can't be a celebrity. Well, hold on. I'm, a, I'm an Oscar <laughs> winning production designer. You could be like you could say you're a BAFTA winning. And then only Charlie would maybe know. BAFTA? Yeah. BAFTA. I have to talk in a British accent yeah. for the remainder Just like, of the I'm island. I'm a super British good actor. And Hello. I usually use my American accent. Hello. Yeah, you got to choose an accent very early on and lean into yeah. it the rest of the time. Like you guys the are plane stuck. has crashed. Complete chaos is going on. And I just am like, it's my time to shine. <laughs> Madison is dead. Hello, Victoria is alive. Victoria is alive. <laughs> Hello. 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 <laughs> uh, anyway. And, yeah. And then Locke's <laughs> marking the trail with the rip, ripped red shirt. He's teaching Boone how Which, to do that. God damn. They had so much red shirt. Where did that come from? <laughs> that was a huge shirt. Yeah. That's all that man. Is there, is there a Hobby Lobby on the island? Maybe. God damn. It was one of uh, Kate's drapes. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, we don't need these rip. <laughs> uh, and then Locke wants to take a break. The trail's starting to go cold. He's getting huffy puffy. And Jack's like, you can't break. Come on, man. Like he's just cracking that whip. Uh, and Jack blames himself for not believing Claire. That's what this part of the scene where we talk about that mm -hmm. in the middle of this arguing and huffing and puffing. And, and John's kind of slowly losing patience with Jack's bullshit. They find one of Charlie's little finger things, one of mm -hmm. his little finger bandages that he's drawn on. Um, and he's leaving them a trail just like when the orcs took him. So that's where mm -hmm. he learned that. Um, cause yeah. Ma Mary does that. Yeah. And then, yeah. I was like, this is fucking great. <laughs> um, and then he they, learned from his time in middle earth. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They find another finger letter and, uh, Kate thinks maybe Ethan is leaving the finger letters, setting up a dummy trail. So they start to argue. Yeah. Cause locks finds us. There's like a series of footprints that follow the finger trail, but then also even more footprints that diverge and go a different path. Here's my theory. You, you want to know my theory? Yeah. I think the others, whoever Ethan hangs out with, mm -hmm. uh, came at that juncture. Ethan and the boys. Took Claire in the direction John's going, perhaps down the hatch, mm -hmm. I would assume. Mm -hmm. Maybe. And then Ethan took Charlie to kill him up the other, which it makes no sense. I'm taking him to the hanging tree, y'all. Yeah. Are you? Are you? <laughs> 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 Jennifer Lawrence just pops out of nowhere. Go into the tree. Um, or... <laughs> if it's Rachel Zegler, it's, it's going to be way more uh, talented. We all, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we all, it's, everybody. We all hanging, everybody. Mm, we all hanging, oh, everybody. <laughs> Ooh. Why didn't you just kill Charlie Derek. at the, or just knock him up? Why did he take Charlie? You know what I mean? That's well, the only thing I can't track. But this, well, that's what I think happened at that juncture well, they of two trails. Use, they probably want to use Charlie as how they use him in this episode. They use him as a, 
like Eight. some sort of collateral to be like, hey, if you don't stop following us, I'll kill one of them. The one of them being Charlie. Uh, I'm going to kill him anyway, full disclosure. Yeah. Well, I also think too, like they probably put him there to like signal yes, but also to like slow them down. Like I'm sure mm-hmm. Ethan was like, oh yeah, we're going to, they're going to stop and like try and save him. Give us more time. Yeah. They're going to give up and try to get Charlie back to camp to, mm-hmm. you know, help him out before they continue on trying to look for Claire. Yeah. But something I did like about this, like kind of fork in the road moment um, was when, you know, Locke acknowledges that Kate like has some intu- intuition to like what could possibly be happening, which is, oh, yeah, Ethan could potentially be uh, leaving a trail like a false trail. And I, I think Locke is like, oh, you're full of surprises or something like that, which later on gives Jack this like prompts him to be like, give me some truth, Kate. Why do you, why are you so good at it? What the fuck, Kate? What the fuck, bro? Why are you dressing like Shaggy all the time now? <laughs> yeah, Jack, it gives me like toxic high school relationship vibes where like well, the guys that are mad that their girlfriend, you know, has any kind of experience in like kissing and stuff. Like how many guys, tell me, I need a list of how many guys right. you've been with. Well, it's you know? just <laughs> That's like, Jack. She's not oh, you can track now? How many trails you been on, girl? Which boyfriend did you learn tracking from? Yeah, it's almost like, that's fucking dumb. Like uh, how she is able to track is, you know, very valid. Like she used to hike with her dad. I mean, if that is the truth, I believe her. Um, but it's just like, again, kind of what you're alluding to of like, he, she, like she has to be questioned why she's, you know, good at this. Whereas you are not questioned. Yeah. Here. How about this, Jack? I don't fucking know you. So that's why you don't know a lot of shit about me. Yeah. It's none of your business. How about that? That's what she should have said. Like he's putting so much pressure on them to be super transparent with each other. When, yeah. And, Hindsight, they don't know each other. Sorry, after the horrible plane crash on day two, I didn't tell you that I had a warrant. Look, I know you've (laughs) seen me sink in the sand. That is not. (laughs) I've shared that that with you. That does not make us Mm -mm. on this level. Mm -mm. Does not a BFF make. Mm -mm. (laughs) So they decide to set up uh, to go down two trails because they have two trackers. But Jack says that somewhat sarcastically and resentfully, but it's it's true. Uh, We cut back to Walt. Telling Sawyer about Ethan and Charlie and Claire, catching him up on the whole thing. Uh, hilarious moment where uh, Walt's like, it's stupid to lie about your name. Why would Ethan do that? And Sawyer's like, no, no. Why, I don't why, know. Why would anybody do that? I don't know. Because, of course, Sawyer's not his name. I, I openly guffawed when Walt's like, I don't know why Walt is the... Hey, Sawyer, let me update you on that. What's the goings on? And Sawyer camp. points that out. He's like, with fucking breaking news from the six year old. You know? Yeah. And I he do. goes, I'm nine. Yeah. I, I openly guffawed when uh, he's like, Ethan took Claire. And Sawyer's like, who the hell is Ethan? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And we've all been saying it. Uh, and Sawyer dismisses this news story until he finds out Saeed is back. And he takes that very seriously. Mm. Uh, is my boy Saeed back? Vengeance. Oh, shit. We I could, am the knight. <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we cut back to Boone making Steve's whole year with a sick Star Trek reference. Um, I literally thought of you, <laughs> Steve, when that was happening. Oh, yeah. It's surface level. It's common red shirt trivia but still it's something oh yeah but i mean in 2004 this joke was like oh yeah hot and fresh and like <laughs> oh they see me the nerd <laughs> they're talking about the star trek tropes on my at my nbc show and of course a guy like boone would be hip to that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um oh yeah I, I i really loved how he he talks about yeah red shirts are always getting killed i've got the red shirts i'm a little worried right now i'm basically sam rockwell from galaxy quest quest right now and then uh, uh, John Locke says something like, oh, sounds like a piss poor captain mm. Mm, taking shots. Yeah, And like Boone really appreciated that, though. He smiled real big like, oh, that's a hot take on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> but you also, need MySpace. I got the vibe that <laughs> 2004, was there not a Reddit? I don't think so. There's no Reddit was thread for Lost? That's crazy. Reddit would have went How am I? How lost. am I feeding you your culture? You should know. Well, I was extremely high from... Uh, 2002-ish until 2012. Okay. <laughs> but I feel like MySpace was all the rage. So uh, anyway, it was big. Reddit, it looks like Reddit started in 2005, so a year after this. <sighs> Probably because of Lost. They're like, we need a place we need a to place. talk about this. They <laughs> mentioned Star Trek on Lost. How do we get this How out of our system? We, and also frog memes. <laughs> I don't know why I'm just feeling inspired to make frog memes. Uh, can you believe that John Locke said? <laughs> but also, I got the vibe. Captain Kirk was a piss poor captain. I got the vibe I that Locke, Boone and Locke knew about Star Trek because 
he Boone can't think of the Spock's name and John gives him a weird look. And I didn't know if there was something there where he's like, Spock, idiot, I'm just humoring you. There is. There's actually a delete. Like they shorten in the I, I actually wasn't going to talk about this beach, please, because I thought it was just inconsequential. But it's funny you mentioned this because this scene actually is slightly longer where it's obvious that Locke does know what Star Trek is. But he just kind of like hand waves him like, nah, I don't really watch that. And so there was like a longer bit where you can tell Locke's like, because Locke's <laughs> Spock, man, <laughs> much older and was a paraplegic in an office. He 100% has seen more Star Trek than Boone. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, yeah. He Boone's the- getting pooned. Locke's watching Star Trek. <laughs> Boone's getting pooned. Locke's getting Spock. All right? Yes! <laughs> it was right there. The fruit was dangling in my face, and I dodged it, and Steve picked it up. Oh, oh that, my needs, God. that needs to be a shirt. That's what? amazing. Boone's getting pooned. Locke's getting, getting Spock. Spock. That's right. Wow. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's the holiday season, the season of gift giving. If you're like me, you've waited until late December to think about it. And now everything that you try to order on a website is not going to arrive until after Christmas. That's the opposite of the holiday spirit. That's stressful. We've got a gift that you can give yourself. You can get a subscription to BetterHelp and give yourself the gift of therapy. If you've never tried therapy before, it's a great way to get into it. You can fill out a questionnaire and get matched with a therapist. And if you don't like them or you're not meshing, it's easy to switch. You can just get another one. And it's all online, so you don't have to stress about the traffic and the driving and the location and all the logistical things that always help you talk yourself out of giving therapy a try. So I think you should do it. This holiday season, lower the stress a little bit. Give yourself the gift of mental wellness. So in the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash streaming things today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash streaming things. Ho, ho, ho. Happy holidays and happy streaming, everybody. This month, we want to give a special shout out to all of our patrons who keep the lights on at streaming things, but we especially want to give a special shout out to the super patrons. They are Kaylee Sampson, San Valentino, Anthony Corona, Infamous, Brent Stradamus, Sunshine, Huckleberry Cauliflower, Optimus, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Little Tickler, Svento7, Jace Gramo, Haley Anderson, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy. Andy Laughlin, Joey Stewart, Jason Hawkins, Big Butthorn, Conrad, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Linda Eklund, Emmy, Joe Velez, John Collins, Amber McVeigh, Amanda King, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Road, Lauren Waller, Jadinklage Morgoon, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Aaron Armstrong, Kevin Strother, Orion Moore, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and of course, Enza. Thank you all so much for supporting the show, and with that, Let's get back to it. But Madison, you ship Boone and Locke. I liked. Well, it's just I was adding on to like the Reddit humor, oh. but I feel like that would that would be a, a Reddit thread. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. There's some fan fiction out there. there, there if sure. you go on Deviant Art and type like Boone Locke Rule 34, oh, you're getting some crazy. 100. <laughs> percent Wow. But no, I I do enjoy. That, that was pairing. my impression of Owen Wilson in that thread. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> Boone Lock Rule 34. Wow. Mm. <laughs> um, Turning into Jennifer Coolidge over here. Yeah. Wow. I, I love how Boone said <laughs> that was good. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love how Boone was like, all right, man, you're either a taxidermist or a hitman. Yeah. Because he asked him, you know, hey, man, you're so cool. You're good at tracking. You kill boars and shit. What did you do in the in the real world? And Locke's like, I was a regional collection supervisor for a box company. They made boxes. I love that last and little tidbit. They made boxes. They made boxes. <laughs> and Boone is just like, fucking bullshit. No way. Yeah. I don't believe no you, way. old man. You're funny. Also, I was paralyzed from the waist down. <laughs> Nick likes to mention that part. That's yeah. a weird joke. <laughs> Only person that knows that is Jack, right? Or does no. anyone? No, no one, one knows. knows. No one. Okay. I no feel like if that. people know, then his entire like presence of being a hunter or you know, whatever is just And that's gone. that's part of the subtext in this episode that I really enjoyed as well that I don't think is, it's really subtle, but we know that Locke knows that there's magic afoot. And so when he's like, Jack, go back to the cave, a lot of that, Boone, leave me alone. There's a lot of him. It's like, 
there's some crazy shit going on out here that you guys, uh, he's seen the monster. Mm -hmm. He knows his legs are working and they shouldn't be. And so he's kind of like, guys, you're ill-equipped for this journey. <laughs> like there's a part of that that I was seeing in, in Locke's performance here that um, that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, he keeps trying to get everybody to leave because he's like, there's wizards and stuff, guys. I'm I'm just gonna come out and say it. <laughs> there's wizards and shit out here. Okay? There's people in pointy hats walking around. This I is just, wild. Yeah, people are speaking French. That's why Locke's like you can't my handle favorites. it. I love John. I Locke. do love Locke. I, I will say this episode has my my Locke scale has heightened. I'm him. worried mm -hmm. because I saw a meme and I disagree with people online most of the time, but it's still like it gave me like a hmm because it was a it was one of those Twitter threads that was like. A character you love that the writers dropped the ball on hard oh. and people were quote tweeting with different and one was a picture of Locke with the like the orange in his mouth and the, the eye scar. And I was like, <laughs> no, what happens? Oh. But I'll find out. Um, you, you, you will. <laughs> uh, we cut back to Kate and Jack who are lost. <laughs> <laughs> lost. Jack gives her shit about her honesty. And this is where she tells them about her, her dad, who was like an army and she said Ranger Battalion, who what I assume means is he was an army ranger. I would assume. Which is like, like that. that's what I thought it's she meant. Like, that's like super hardcore. That's like fucking Navy SEAL level. So her dad was like a bad motherfucker. Um, and the woods was his church. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Praise be unto the wood. And the, dirt. <laughs> the dirt is speaking to me. Just like it speaks to Locke. And back in the past, uh, Jack's dad wants I him to die. sign the incident report. And his dad doesn't want to lose his license. He's like, yeah, hey, it's not a big deal. Everybody takes a few shots before surgery every now and then. You're being a bitch right now, yeah, Jack. I thought you were cool. And Jack's like, we really don't, Dad. That's like super not cool. Um, That's in surgery 101. And then he hits him with the old greater good line, which uh, is the, good. the line any villain will will pull out of their back pocket. The, the greater, greater good. good. Hot fuzz quote. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was making sure because that's where I'm going with this. Yeah. Um, make Sanford great again. And then dad. And he started talking about crusty jugglers. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then dad promises it will never happen again. I swear to God, I'm never going to get wasted again and do surgery. Okay. Scout's honor. Pinky promise. Um, and then he kind of. on it. He guilts Jack. He's like, it's not just my job. It's my whole life, Jack. And so Jack begrudgingly signs the incident report. We cut back to the present. But he doesn't feel good about it. We cut back to the present. Someone sneaking up on Saeed and it's POV shot. It's really silly, sillily done, but I'm having so much fun. I'm into it. And then uh, he says he's up there to get his antibiotics because nobody trusts him with them. So he has to foot it up there every day to get his antibiotics for his uh, knife wound that Saeed gave him in his arm. And then Saeed catches him up on everything that's been happening. Honestly, he tells Sawyer more of a full calm story than anyone got. Because Jack was like, what? In the middle of all that and just ran off. So I think well, Sawyer kind of knows more than anybody. The series of events that happened previously was Hurley came up to Jack just in the middle. Well, right as Saeed got there. Am I yeah. wrong? No. So it was just not wrong. Yes. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> so I really don't think Saeed has had a moment to like say anything to anybody, really. Yeah. He's got all this info to dump and he's just sitting there like, just like oh, fucking crazy. Want to talk Claire, to why do you have to get kidnapped? <laughs> do I have to torture stealing? somebody to get a friend around here? <laughs> like, God damn. Who do I torture to tell my story to? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, he ends up having a, a good moment with Sawyer where Sawyer's like, I'm all, I'm all out of forgiveness, bitch, or whatever. And uh, <laughs> Sawyer, Saeed's like, I felt so guilty. I was going to leave forever. And I got lonely and came back. In my notes, I have and Kith. Kiss? Kith. Kith. And Tongue first, just like Kate. Sawyer's like, I learned this. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love it, Saeed. <laughs> I don't. I don't love it. <laughs> I do not love it. I feel like whenever there's just an intimate moment between two characters, in my notes, I just I just can't help it. Mm -hmm. I, you know kiss. what? Honestly, if Sawyer and Saeed kiss, I'm here for it. I'm not. I'm get, here for I'm it. I'm not going to hate it. I'm going to tell you that right no, now. No, those are two beautiful men. I think they should all just be uh, sister wives <laughs> or brother husbands. Brother husbands. <laughs> Yay, brother husbands. Brother husbands. <laughs> I'm going to DeviantArt right now. <laughs> Rule 34, <laughs> Sawyer and Saeed. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and then, um, he tells him about how she believes there's other people, but uh, the French woman's never seen them. And does he believe that they're there? And Saeed's like, I'm not sure, but I might have heard them. And then Sawyer... It seems unconvinced, but ultimately when he leaves, he says, I kept your signal fire burning. 
It's like Sawyer's a good dude, right? Yeah, he, he he's there's a good dude under there, but he's like he, he wants so badly to be seen as this. It's more comfortable mean, for him. Shitty guy. Yeah. yeah, that's like that's his love language. Is it's being his an defense asshole. mechanism. It's his defense mechanism. <laughs> yeah, he's got a lot of emotional trauma. Uh, we cut back to Hurley and Walt playing uh, what you call it, backgammon back. or backgammon. Mm-hmm. Different, different yeah. game. I literally just have playing underline because I had no clue. It's backgammon. It backgammon. It's like we used to get these board games when I was a kid that had like five games in one. They were and the you rage. Only played checkers. Checkers and chess is on one side. You flip it over. It was always the triangles. Nobody played backgammon. <laughs> if you try to flip that bitch over at a friend's party, you're kicked out immediately. <laughs> this motherfucker tried to get us to play backgammon, mom. He's no pizza for him. He's nope. gone. Call his parents immediately <laughs> to pick him up. Uh, but apparently in this world, Hurley's been playing it. He plays 17th in a tournament recently. Um, That's not good. That's actually very good. Yeah. There's like <laughs> 20 people there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then this is where Walt said, you know, his other dad said he was the luckiest person he ever knew. Mm-hmm. Brian. And Brian. Hurley gets upset and leaves the game. And Walt's like, you owe me $20,000 because they were betting for money. And yeah, he's like, you'll get it. Funny. You'll get it. It's a great scene. But Hurley was also supposed to protect him. And I didn't know if they were saying that he left Walt there. I think they just accidentally showed that scene as no one's watching Walt. <laughs> Literally no one. I'm pretty sure Michael's like, I Least left you with Michael. so-and-so. And when, when Michael says, I left you with whoever, he literally just was with Walt and then walked away. Mm-hmm. And that person just happened to be in the room. Mm-hmm. Stay with Hurley. <laughs> yeah. He'll read you the manifest if things get dangerous. Uh, we cut back to John and Boone, who might be lost. And... <laughs> Boone runs. A, <laughs> we find out that Boone runs a uh, his mother's uh, an arm of his mother's matrimony empire. That's what he does for a living. Um, the Martha Stewart of matrimony. And Locke asks the dumbass question: Who's running it while you're here? Like, who cares? What the fuck? Obviously, we're, his we're mom. hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, his mom. <laughs> Obviously, his mom. And then Locke like calls the rain. It's gonna rain in one minute, give or take a few seconds. And then it does. And he's like, he goes said, full Shawshank. And he goes full Andy Dufresne. Okay, Aww. Karen from Mean Girls. <laughs> yeah. Feels this breast. There's a, <laughs> but he rubs his bald head. There's a 30% chance it's raining right now. <laughs> uh, and then Boone refuses to go back. He's like, no, I'm going to stay with you, bro. John's you like, predicted the wet rain, man. Yeah, I'm not going. Yeah. I'm with him, though. If somebody's like, hey, hike back in the darkness and the rain by yourself or continue with me. I'm definitely picking staying with dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? That yeah. sounds terrible. With dad. Also, did we, I keep bringing it up in my head. There's fucking question mark monsters somewhere out here. And you guys seem to be ignoring them now. And it's bothering me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is kind of strange that, uh, the whole time John Locke's like, we should stay together. It's dangerous. This is a dangerous forest. It's, it's, it's dangerous. And then we get to this point. He's like, ah, you'll be fine. Just welcome back. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I just don't like Jack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, was- you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're pretty cool, Boone. <laughs> you know Star Trek. I'll yeah. tell the monsters to leave you alone. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're friends. They're and they're super pretty. <laughs> I, I love when he does predict the the rain. Boone's like, did they teach you to pre- predict that at the box company? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Which now that I'm thinking about it, like, I want the boxes to get wet. Is there a world where he could have just seen the rain coming behind Boone? Well, I think. The, Outdoor people do can do this. Like it, it, well, there's a certain smell. smell to it. And well, yes, yeah. but I'm not good at it. When you're on an island, and you know, I there it appeared that they were in an open field. There's of moisture some everywhere already. Yeah. Well, I just was like, you can kind of see like if there's a cloud, like a dark cloud, and you can see kind of the mist falling. I'm sure he, I don't know. I'm just saying there could be. He might have had there service could've, on could've, his could've, weather channel app. Right, and he's just being coy. Right. Well, I'm just saying there could have <laughs> been like some funny. Locke was just like. It'll rain in a minute. <laughs> he just sees it coming. Yeah. He had some kind of trick. What if it didn't rain in a minute? That'd be awkward. That would have been, I wish that was the result, but then Boone never said anything. Yeah. It was just like, oh, okay. Yep. Going to keep raining any minute. Any minute now. And that dude from the crow popped up and he was like, it can't rain all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jack and Kate uh, find another finger letter. We cut back to them. And then they hear echoing screams. Jack ah. is convinced that it's Claire. So he gets- Kate some, doesn't hear it though. She, yeah. She's like, what? Yeah. Jack, chill out, bro. So she starts to think that they should, it's it's going to get dark soon. We lost, you know, what are you doing? Calm down. Jack goes completely manic, starts climbing this rainy hill. Like, hold on, little root. Um, <laughs> was, that a, was that a black sheep reference? Yeah. <laughs> 
for the love of God, hold on, little Ruth. <laughs> and they start climbing the hill. Jack falls. Uh, and then Ethan walks up to his barely conscious body and he's like, stop following me or I'll kill one. And then Jack's like, no, gotcha. <laughs> and then he gets his ass whooped Ethan by Ethan. Ethan ass his ass. Whooped. He got his ass beat by a guy named Ethan. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's always the worst. Yeah. I want it to be like tiny or something, you know? Which, <laughs> Ethan looked like in previous episodes, he looked kind of lanky and like, but no, he's... He's a big guy. You get him in a wet t-shirt. Yeah, I was like, damn, <laughs> Ethan, What's shit. Up? What's up, Ethan? Take me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like feeling his pecs. Mm -hmm. Like, ooh. <laughs> okay, Ethan. You can have my finger letters. <laughs> <laughs> you can have my finger letters. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, yeah, so Jack gets his ass whooped. We cut back to the past. Back in time. Um, and it's the father talking to the husband of the dead wife, uh, the dead patient who is threatening to sue and Jack's like infuriated and emotionally destroyed watching his father callously lie and console this man. We cut back to the present. Jack was out for a few minutes. It's not raining anymore. Kate doesn't believe that Ethan was there. Uh, no, he fell on the hill, dude. Like nobody kicked your ass. You fucking ate shit. It was really, <laughs> it was really embarrassing. Uh, and she's like, the trails washed away. We should go. And, uh, and he's like, and this is the line, I guess that, uh, Steve hated it. All he said was, not again. He says, I'm not letting him do this, not again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not letting Ethan do this. And then not again is the part referencing the old stuff. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like combined. Yeah. I, I bought it. Um, especially in conjunction with the past that we're seeing, you know. Um, back in the past, Jack is listening to his dad lie about the surgery to like the board of directors who are overseeing the incident. Sorry for this formality, Christian. Uh, of course, his dad's name we is know Christian. you're super dope. We go to your ragers every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you made some sweet jello shots the other day. I'm yeah. sure you were off the clock when you hey gave man, us those. when you were hanging upside down on the keg last week, Woo. my dude, <laughs> I haven't partied like that since I was 20. Yeah. And then we find out that the patient was pregnant. As yeah, well, that was and Jack is like floored by this. Like and there were two I feel lives like he lost. He should have known that before. He was this digging movie. around in there. Well, he well, should have been informed, well, but he came in late to the, the surgery. Dad, the dad alludes to it being early in the pregnancy, so I don't necessarily know what. Yeah, she wasn't like sitting there like Claire on the table. Yeah, she didn't have. She was not in the third trimester. No. I don't think. I no, think no, she no. was very sure. early on, but still. Um, and that's where he decides to come clean. Actually, I want to change my statement. My dad was drunk as shit and, uh, pretty sure that's not cool. Mm -hmm. And I think it was his fault. He cut the hepatic artery, which I'm pretty sure I'm not a, a an artery surgeon. I'm dealing more with spines. Typically that's an important one. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, and it's clever because in the beginning, the first flashback we see when they're in the surgery room, like the thing Jack's working on is that artery. He's like, I've almost got it tightened up. I almost yeah. got it fixed. Mm hmm uh, which Clear. is good. Yep. Uh, and we cut back to the present and Jack and Kate find Charlie hanging, like hanging, hanging, like the hanging tree, like Jennifer Lawrence is definitely singing. And, uh, they struggle to cut him down. It's a very good scene, uh, where like Kate can't quite reach it. And he's, you know, brain, they're both panicking. It's very well done. Um, he's not breathing. Jack's trying to do CPR. He won't give up on Charlie. He's pounding his chest. Uh, Kate finally convinces them to calm down. They start mourning Charlie. And then he's like, no. And he starts pounding on the chest. And I, I love this scene. It's so well done because imagine from Kate's perspective, you think Charlie's dead. You think Jack's is Jack's losing it. You're trying to mourn Charlie and process this on your own, but also like somebody pounding on the dead body's chest. Um, it makes it way worse, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it's just, it's just really well done from her perspective. But then Charlie comes back. <gasps> Jack's able to jolt his heart back. Can you imagine how bruised your chest is well, after that, though, when you come back? He shattered Charlie's rib cage. 100%. Yeah. Charlie's dying on that island after that. <laughs> because So it's funny. So the coincidentally, the day that I watched this episode, the morning of, I actually was in a um, AED class because we got a, a AED in our workplace since we had this like class to like. What does that stand for? Oh, I can't remember, but it's basically the little like defibrillator thing that they have mm -hmm. everywhere. So if someone falls down, so they're teaching us like how to use it, but also like, Hey, 
you got to do compressions. Like this is how you do compressions. So we're like doing all the compressions on the. Is it true you don't dummies. do the mouth to mouth anymore? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's a bummer. And so you you do the chest compressions <laughs> set to staying alive. You try to stay alive, stay alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Misty. And the guy and the the dude who was running the course is like, if you're doing chest compressions wrong. Or he was like, do it here. If you do it too low, you're going to like break the tip of the, what is that? The xiphoid process or whatever it's called down there. It sounds fake, but go on. But he was like 70% of the time, if you do chest compressions, you're breaking someone's ribs. 70% mm -hmm. of the time, you're just straight up going to break someone's ribs. Yeah. And 30% of the time, they just have strong ribs. Yeah, I guess. Okay. And 30% of the times you just like go right through them. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you're just so fucking floor. ripped. <laughs> you just pierce the skin. So it was just funny, like, nice. <laughs> and then you high five because you just won. Yeah, because you're fucking jacked. <laughs> uh, and then they're, they're full of candy because it was surprised it was a pinata. Uh, but it was funny going through that class and then a couple hours later watching this episode and then Jack is just fucking just going to yeah. town on Charlie, just beating the shit out of him. And then when Charlie does get resuscitated, everyone's like super happy, right? But then Jack's like, it's okay, buddy. Just breathe. Just breathe, buddy. And Charlie, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> And, they, and you, know, you imagine his throat is fucked, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. He's going to have one of those. Uh, we had, they had a really great makeup of like um, the bruising or whatever on his mm -hmm. neck. He's going to have like an Aldo Rain scar the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, they like Damn take, good. They take him back to the camp and he's like not speaking. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. I was wondering if he <laughs> couldn't speak. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought they were going to do the throat thing, which would have been really clever. Like he can't tell them any of what he, I don't like what they're doing with him being like traumatized or whatever. Yeah. I don't see where they're going yet. So obviously I can't judge, but I would much prefer if it was just, he, he was he a normal speak. Charlie who couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. um, like you ever uh, read that book uh, by Zora Neale, Zora Neale Hurston, um, Beloved, remember? Beloved. Uh, anyway, the protagonist can't talk at first. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, good book. And, um, <laughs> but yeah, Charlie's alive. And it just cuts back to Jack, Charlie and uh, at all back at the camp. And so they've they've taken Charlie back, abandoned abandoned Claire for now. Well, John and Boone are still out there though. Michael returns as well, and Walt's like, "Charlie, fall down!" And then, <laughs> <laughs> and Charlie won't speak at first. Um, and but eventually he's like, "I didn't see or hear anything. I don't remember anything." And he seems to be like traumatized or convinced by someone not to talk. We don't know yet. Mm -hmm. um, but he does say they only wanted Claire. And uh, Shannon is worried about Boone because Boone's not there. Kate, I think, is like, don't worry, he's with Locke and Locke's got knives. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he, super, he can predict the weather. He's good. He, he's yeah, super he's bald fine. and capable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Boone, back to Boone and Locke, he asks Locke if they're lost. And Boone wants to go back now. He's like, I know what I said earlier. I'm scared now. We should go back. It's and nighttime. We should go together. I've heard I need... rumors about these trees. Yeah. <laughs> the trees are starting to dead. talk to me. Yeah, I think we should head back. I don't want none of that action. Um, and Boone's like, I'll be fine. I, I, I'm. You merely adopted the darkness. Oh, you mean Locke? Yeah, Locke says that. Okay. Yeah. You merely adopted the darkness. I was born to it. And uh, he, But he tosses, him, he tosses him the flashlight, but Boone drops it. He's got no hands. And uh, but fingers. It, it lands on steel. Clang, clang, hits, clang, clang. Hits what appears to be a metal door or something of com some kind. And then I might my last note is, is this the fucking hatch? And that's the end of the episode there. Um, or it was a Power Ranger robot. We don't know if it was a Zorg. Like a Zorg, yeah. Zorg, yeah. yeah. Um, what is that? That's what we're going to find out, says John Locke. That's right, baby. And now it's time for Beach Please. Beach, Beach Please, please with guys. Steve. With me. Yeah, where Steve talks about some behind the scenes trivia for each episode, if he has any. Steve, you got any juice for us this time? I've got the juice. It's corn. Uh, it's corn. It's corn. So a lot of what I have today, there's, there wasn't a ton that I found in terms of like interesting production stuff, but I, I did find some fun bloopers. So we mm. got a bunch of stuff going on in here. So first off, when Jack punches Charlie to life, uh, he actually ends up hitting him 23 times in the chest, punching him. And then they pause for a moment. Doesn't when, seem like an accident. Yeah, I know. He's like, I fucking hated drive shaft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he punches him 23 times, pauses when they think he's dead. But then when he goes back for some more, he punches him nine more times, totaling to Charlie being punched 
32 times in the chest. Wow. And for those of you watching at home, this is not how to do compressions. Uh, <laughs> the episode... It worked. That's all I got to say. And yeah, it's true. I mean, how, do, how long do you think Charlie was out? Like A full couple minutes. If you think about it, yeah. if, you, if you are gracious and say that he was maybe semi-alive while on the tree... Yeah, like maybe still he was at least a couple of minutes. Hanged of, within a minute of Jack and Kate finding him. Enough for brain damage is a pretty big risk. I yeah, think. yeah. Hence He's, the uh, I don't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember he, who I am. When he finally talks, he's like, "I may not be a smart man, <laughs> but I know what drive shaft is. We all, everybody." <laughs> <laughs> I love Forrest Gump and drive shaft. Hurley, ice cream. <laughs> Oh, well, I was playing golf. <laughs> John just started running. <laughs> he looks over at Saeed. Those look like comfortable shoes. <laughs> I bet you can walk around all day in shoes like that and not feel a thing. I saw Kay sinking in the sand. <laughs> Kate was sinking. That random guy took that pregnant lady away from camp. <laughs> That's all I got to say about Ball. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I need Forrest Gump to make an appearance oh, on Lost. 100%. More often. Everyone would be so much happier if he was on that island with them. Uh, the episode was orig- had a different title originally. Originally it was titled What It Takes which is something that Christian said to Jack in the Boo. episode, White Rabbit. <laughs> yeah, we want Boo. Daddy in the title. <laughs> All the best cowboys have daddy issues. <laughs> uh, and again, we kind of brought this up er, um, in the episode with the inhaler, but Boone was originally not the person written to go with Locke. It oh, was, he was act- that character again. It was supposed to be Arthur. Uh, it was especially originally two new guest characters, Arthur and Sullivan, but Arthur and Sullivan, if you remember, I believe it was Arthur was the one that was supposed to have the inhaler issue. Uh, several mm. episodes, episodes ago, but they replaced it with Boone. Uh, this change in the script of making Boone the one that goes with Locke would completely change the trajectory for Boone's character arc in the series. Mm. So where Boone is going was not originally where that character was supposed to go. That tracks that Boone was not initially the Star Trek fan Yeah, as well. Yeah, you can see it's someone named Arthur would be like, hey, let me tell you about Captain <laughs> When I think of Trekkie, hey, let me, Ian let me, Summerhalter let me is not who popped up in my head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speak for your son. <laughs> His Trekkies look like Ian Summerhalter all the time. It's true. Originally, uh, instead of uh, Kate and Jack running up the hill and Jack falling down and then Ethan beating the shit out of Jack, the original scene was that Jack and Kate would actually be attacked by a bunch of others with blow darts. Like you wouldn't see them. There would just be darts flying at them from the woods and they wouldn't quite know what was happening. But that was changed out according to Damon Lindelof for quote unquote being too cheesy. So they switched it to being much more grounded that Ethan's the one that kind of just shows up and Mm -hmm. battles him instead of having random blow darts attacking them out of nowhere. Hmm. What do you guys think about that? Do you think that'd be too too cheesy? or Yes, that's giving um, Temple of Doom. Yeah. You know, you throw me the idol. Yeah, <laughs> I'll throw you the whip. <laughs> uh, and yeah, now, good, it's time for love. good change on their on their part. Good change. Good time for love, Doctor Jones. What's Jack's last name? Shepherd. Shepherd. Good time for love, Doctor Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we get to the bloopers. Uh, in the scene with Walt and Sawyer, in the background, right as Sawyer turns away from Walt to uh, to go find Saeed, you can see him uh, a boom mic in the shot. Ah. Uh. The, in the top right hand corner you see that and it's really funny because I went back and watched it and I love boom mic operators because they're, they're, it's it's a very hard job because you're spending a lot of time holding this mic in a very uncomfortable position for a very long time and if you watch that boom mic when it gets into the shot you can literally see in the movement of the mic pole going oh fuck because <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit, I'm> <laughs> he's looking um, at the monitor yeah that's funny um, and then in the scene where again Jack is knocking the shit out of Charlie's chest uh, when Kate thinks that Charlie's dead and then Jack goes back for more there's a shot where Kate stands up and turns away in anguish because she's upset at what's going on the entire time she does that the camera stands up with her and kind of tracks her movement 
When you do that, you see a ton of production equipment in the top left-hand corner of the screen. Hmm. <laughs> and oh. it's there for a while. Oh, when she's climbing to cut Charlie down? Is that what you said? No, like, when, so when she's kind of, she kneels down with Jack when they think Charlie's dead, and then when he starts hitting him again, she stands up and turns away. Yeah, yeah. So it stands up with her, and you just see, like, a box and some wires and a bunch of equipment just there. Oh. And it's there for a really odd... Is it very, like... Very visible. Oh. But it, but it's interesting, because when I first watched it, I didn't pick up on no, it. No, I didn't but see But when it. someone was like, oh, it's back there, I looked like, oh, wow, how did I not see that? That's right there playing Because they got all those vines and stuff there. So. Oh, it's like a giant cardboard box and, oh, like, yeah. a bunch of silver stuff on it. I was going to ask if it was, like, uh, like, yeah, cardboard or... Are you looking it up uh, right now? I'm trying to. Yeah, it's, it's really funny. Um, but that concludes this episode of Beach Please. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. We need to get like a Barbie. Uh, hey, Barbie. Quote where it's like, my job is beach please. for this segment. And then you just say, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now it's time for our Mile High Club moments, our top three favorite moments of the episode. And I will say two of my three have changed while talking about the episode. Mm. I realized the truth of my feelings uh, that's why I was tippity typing because I had like a bunch of the one liner jokes initially. I'm like, these are all gold. Mm -hmm. uh, but Madison, what are your three favorite moments? Uh, my number three is, well, first let me say there's a couple. So I'm, I'm kind of nitpick, not nitpicking, but figuring out which ones I'm going to use. Uh, Sawyer and Walt, when they had their little moments, I just, I just thought it was really cool. I also don't think we've ever seen those characters interact up until this point, or if they have, it's not been anything uh memorable but i don't know it was it was quirky it was fun um and i liked how the two kind of played off of each other yeah it's my number three Steve. yeah the last couple episodes we've been getting a lot of sawyer plus someone he's never really interacted with we got uh, mm -hmm. sawyer and hurley and not, last episode and it, it it's been really fun yeah and not, not very much jen and son though i need some i need some jen and son oh, yeah. yeah i would love to go back to those characters for sure uh, my number three is actually Sawyer and Saeed, mm -hmm. um, where, you know, they, they really build up the tension of Sawyer kind of getting his revenge on Saeed for torturing him. But really, it just becomes Saeed, like, putting all his cards on the table. Like, listen, man, I'm really, really sorry. I didn't want to come back, but I felt like I had to. There's some crazy shit going down. Here's what it is. And it, it really, you kind of see Sawyer kind of step back and be like, oh, fuck, that is, that's not good. Uh, but hey, I'm also kind of a good guy because I kept your fire lit. Like they, that one little line does a lot to uh, kind of bring a lot of Sawyer's character out in the open. And it's good to see Sawyer actually make amends with someone that isn't Kate. Like he's forming, he, Sawyer's starting to form bonds very slowly in very small ways. And that's good to see because just him constantly being you know, butting heads with every fucking character is getting old. Yeah. Um, I'm okay with him butting heads with Jack because those are like, you know, Batman and Superman basically mm -hmm. uh, of the series or at least of the season. And so I'm just happy to see Sawyer growing and I love seeing Saeed uh, doing anything because that's a beautiful man. That's correct. Kit, what's your uh, number three? So initially, I just want to shout out some things that are not going to come up for me now. But initially, I literally had three jokes as my three moments because I love them so much. Um, Hurley's I'm a warrior back home. Something of a warrior back home. Uh, Sawyer being called out for lying about his name uh, inadvertently by Walt. And uh, the box company joke uh, where, where Locke was like, we make boxes. Uh, just that little <laughs> addition to that made that so funny to me. But I'm going to start. My number three is when Jack signs the incident report for his mm -hmm. father. Um, I one. think that that scene just pulled so much weight and me having any empathy at all for a character I really do not like and Jack Sawyer. Uh, and it, it, so it means Jack that, Sawyer or Jack Shepard. That's the ultimate Whoa. character you don't like <laughs> all Jack the Shepherd. bad qualities Jack of both Sawyer. and none of the good. I, I just really, you know, and that's a huge part of liking the show because he's somewhat the protagonist. Right. And so it, uh, I know there's a lot of characters in the show, but they, they really lean on, on Jack. And so this, was a huge step forward for me. And that's hence why I wanted to just start barreling through episodes. I'm like, okay, I'm kind of fucking getting in, getting which would be it. like week 11 of the show back when it aired. Uh, but yeah, that, that moment, I think I just, there's so much torture and it takes, uh, it takes a, a lot of character to go against your own father, especially when you're under their thumb as much like you work for them and mm -hmm. stuff, right? Like this is just, 
he's got some some serious codependency things going on and it, it shows the strength of Jack's character that he had the moral fiber to uh, cuz it, it would have been so easy to like talk himself into wow that's true it could have happened anyway even if he wasn't drinking you know like, yeah mm -hmm. um so I, I i like that moment a lot that's when jack signs the incident report at my number 3 madison your number 2 i am trying to decide which one's my number 2 which one's my number 1 um so many good choices i know um i'm going to say uh lock saying it's going to rain in a minute and then it does okay uh <laughs> I don't know. I just thought, oh, this is like, and it started fucking raining, raining. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, and I liked the moment he had afterwards, and it was just a cool like mic drop moment for Locke. And I really liked Locke this episode. And I don't know for him to just have like this big moment of, yeah, I know it's gonna fucking rain. It's gonna rain in a minute. And like I don't know. It was just cool. I was like, oh. Go lock. Yeah, for sure. Ope. 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 Go lock. Go lock. Ope. Ope. Um, Steve, you're number two. My number two is your number three. It's the uh, the the signing scene mm. with um, uh, Jack and his dad. Because uh, and everything you just said about that, like I think this is the scene that I think handles the best. The the acting's really really great. The and just that tension of like going against your dad, you know, believing in yourself. Like I know what's right. I know that. He's impaired. I know that he can't be in this position because he's putting lives at danger, but also it's my dad and it's his life. And I can totally buy into someone like, all right, I'm going to give you this one last chance kind of a deal, maybe. Because, uh, you know, you know, Christian does the whole like, this is my life, Jack. Oh, oh, how mm -hmm. do you have a heart and not like kind of like, all right, man, I'm she's dead. Sure. I still I'm still alive. Yeah, she, yeah. Like, think about that. She's Jack. dead, man. Well, I mean, what are we gonna do for her? <laughs> Nothing at this point. Come on. <laughs> oh, she's pregnant, by the way. Uh, <laughs> she was. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think I, that that was a very good scene. That's why it's my number two. Awesome. What's your number two? My number two is the scene between Saeed and Sawyer um, after some reflection and talking about. It. I mean, that was just a powerful scene. Really well done, did Saeed. Flippy flop. We did. We flip flopped. We did. We flopped. We did. We flopped. Um, Saeed, My dude. Saeed's always pulling weight when it comes to dramatization um, and bringing the bringing the heat. And again, I'm really warming up to Sawyer. I'm so like you said. I'm so glad they dropped that shtick where he's just a dick all the time. It, and it all started back at the golf game when he placed the bet, and the group kind of led by Boone allowed him in. And so I think we're going to see him just drop that whole act slowly over the coming episodes. I'm excited for that. Uh, but in general. Uh, we got a lot of, it's a, that's a cool character dynamic, especially if we do like an enemies to lovers thing, it would be great. Mm -hmm. um, oh, totally. <laughs> we do an enemies to lovers thing. I think thing. it's going to be enemies to bros, but I would, hey, I got an idea though. Enemies to friends with benefits, at least. At, at least. The bear, hey, at least. bear minimum. What if your friend needs relief? Yeah. <laughs> Brother husbands, that's what I'm. Hey, hey, Saida. You got any needs? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking about my suitcase full of things I stole from the fuselage. That's right. That's right. Talking about these mitts. Cradle the balls. I stroke the shaft. Swallow, swallow the gravy. The gravy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you know? Uh, that's my number two. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Madison, you're number one. My number one is Jack exposing his daddy. <laughs> I don't like the way you said that. Uh, I just, I like. Exposed me, daddy. Exposed. <laughs> daddy, you're exposed. <laughs> I'm tuning into Brittany. Sorry. Brittany? Um, daddy. But I, I liked that scene. I thought it was a very intense scene where they're in the conference room and, you know, they're discussing and, you know, the dad thinks, oh yeah, this is just like a walk in the park conversation. Like, you know, Jack's already signed, whatever. And then dun, dun, dun. No, he's exposing you because you suck. And, and Christian tries to interrupt him. His dad, he's like, Jack, now is not the time. Now is the, like literally the now time. Now is like the time. <laughs> if you want to expose me, we do it privately later. <laughs> Wait. Uh, um. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, it was, it was a, the figuring out that the, the woman was pregnant mm -hmm. and, you know, Jack coming to that, you know, uh, that realization, like, no, like my dad really fucked up. Um, and yeah, no, I, I thought it was like, a, it's a, cause then in hindsight, it's like, okay, when we saw them at the beginning or when we saw Jack in like the flashback, like the first flashback, we now know why his dad 
or why his dad hates him or whatever. Anyway, but yeah, that's that's my number one. Great choice. Great choice. Steve, your favorite moment. My number one is selfishly the nerdiest moment of the entire Star Trek? episode. It was the Star Trek regional no, manager interaction not. with Locke and Boone. It nice. gives me so much joy as a Trekkie to see it be popping up in shows, but also to see like one of my favorite characters, John Locke, just, you know, anytime that guy's on screen, I'm, I just love Terry O'Quinn. I love his portrayal of the character. And also finally we get to see Boone stepping up to do something mm -hmm. and it's such a little, it's a pairing of two characters that you don't think right away would work, but they have really, really good chemistry, Terry O'Quinn and Ian Summerholder. They actually like really, really bounce off each other quite well. And that's such a fun, lighthearted sort of scene that makes you like these characters instantly a lot more. And is it the most like dramatic thing? Is it the most important scene? No, but selfishly, it gave me the most joy yeah. out of this episode. That's why it's my number one. And then Steve said, shameless plug, but if you want to tune into my Star Trek coverage, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to listen to the four episodes of Star Trek we did. Oh, yeah, because the strike <laughs> happened the strike right in the middle happened. of Picard, oh, too. Yeah. yeah, It's a bummer. That's something we never talk about, what we lost with Picard. Well, technically, we were covering Strange New Worlds. That's right, Strange mm -hmm. New Worlds. Um, season three of Picard would have been great to cover. That was a great... Season three was great. People Seasons love one it. and two were dog People shit. People loved Picard. Mm. Uh, my number one is when Charlie came back, when Jack brought Charlie back, but specifically because of Evangeline Lilly's performance. Um, and I, again, that just affected me profoundly from the moment they found Charlie and frantically tried to cut him down while panicking. Uh, and then just, I think she just sold it. The, the turmoil of already being resigned to the fact that Charlie had died and now she's just got to watch Jack so he, he's prolonging her misery by not accepting it, but mm -hmm. also she's she feels for Jack and what you know and what he's going through, and it, it, I can just imagine that being a devastating thing to experience. And then like when he comes back, like her, the camera focuses on her for a moment, and just her shock and relief, and mm -hmm. oh no shit, you know. <laughs> um, I just it's really well done. Um, loved it so much. That's my number one, which brings me to our nomination for the passenger princess of the episode mm. the best performance and i think not so easy this time you know you could no. go matthew fox but i don't think you'd be crazy for going terry o'quinn i don't think you'd be crazy um for going naveen andrews even you know again you know you, that wouldn't be crazy just, just give naveen andrews the award every episode every episode you know uh, maybe some josh holloway mm -hmm. you know it might be weird if you said uh, malcolm david kelly for walt but i wouldn't fight you on it mm -hmm. So Madison, hey, with that don't being be said, shade at my boy Wall. <laughs> Charlie fall down. Charlie fall down. Well, who uh, are you nominating? My passenger princess this week is Terry O'Quinn. Uh, oh, Sir Locke. Sir Locke. Sir Locke. Um, Call he, me John. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Uh, I I just I really enjoyed his performance. I liked how I feel like. You know, when Sawyer or Saeed kind of give Jack shit, it's almost like Jack brushes it off. But when John Locke gives him shit, it's like, oh, this is serious because like John Locke is John Locke. Um, but I don't know. I just I really enjoyed his performance. Um, I liked the whole rain bit. I thought that was really cool and badass. And um, I just like how he embodies this like almost wizardy character um, like a wise Gandalf, but it's luck. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. Gandalf the gray for sure. Yeah. Anyway, but that is my passenger princess this week. Steve, who are you going with? I'm going with, uh, the incredibly talented Evangeline Lilly. Oh, as Kate, uh, because, and you kind of briefly touched on this a little earlier. Um, that scene specifically with, um, Jack trying to bring Charlie back to life. I'm going to be honest with you. When he started just hauling off and punching Charlie's chest, I was laughing because I just thought like, this is like so dumb. This is the guy who laughed at the death of Dobby. I just want to remind yeah, the listeners. Yeah, and I'm laughing at, <laughs> at Jack's chest compressions. But um, no, the, but the reason why I'm giving it to, to Evangeline Lilly is in that scene, initially when it started and he starts punching him, I'm laughing, right? Yeah. But by the end of the scene... I'm brought back into it and just how rough. Just when I thought I was difficult. out. They, she they, brings me back in. Yeah. Uh, by the end of the scene, 
I'm, I'm pulled back in. I'm feeling the, the weight of what's happening. I'm feeling emotions. I'm feeling sad. Like I, for a second, even though I've seen the fucking show for a second, I'm like, Oh my God, are they going to go Charlie? Um, and I think 95% of that is because I'm watching Evangeline Lilly in that scene. Cause she is crushing the reaction to what Jack's doing. This ridiculous thing of him punching and her reacting like, what the fuck are you doing? Stop. Like quit hitting him, please. That is where that scene's power comes from, is from her performance. And and also throughout the rest of the episode, she's also just incredible overall. Um, and that's why I'm giving it to her. She is, I think, an underrated standout of this show every week. Yeah. Um, I am delighted to agree with you. I'm also giving it to Evangeline Lilly. <gasps> um, nice. And I, I do. I disagree. I think they've kind of sidelined her, though, in recent episodes. Mm. Haven't given her much to do. Oh, for um, sure. She was literally sinking last episode. Literally. <laughs> but again, for all the reasons you just said, and I have never seen the show. So I thought I was pretty convinced they were actually going to kill Charlie. And I was confused because I'm like, Donna, this is 2004. Dominic Monaghan's one of their biggest names. Hmm. And they just went through all the trouble of having him detox from opiates. And it seems like a strange choice, but I, it appears that they are actually killing. Maybe he's, he'll come back. The, the, I started thinking like my brain was just, you know, rolling off yeah. a cliff where I was like, okay, maybe the, the island will bring him back the way that they brought John's legs back. And that'll be a weird plot point, like that he dies and then comes walking into camp the next day or something like, mm -hmm. but I was convinced that he was dead in this moment somehow. So when they cut to that wide shot. Yeah. Yeah. That's sold, what it's like. Ooh. But sold by Evangeline Lilly, you know? Uh, and then no. So yeah, I just thought she was incredible throughout this episode. Uh, repeatedly trying to rein Jack back in and kind of offsetting his mania, which the parts that maybe didn't work for, for Steve and many others, I'm sure I think Evangeline was kind of holding it together in the mm -hmm. way that she was playing those scenes. Um, fucking incredible. But Terry O'Quinn was a, was a, a choice of oh, yeah. for sure, just because he's so cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what I'm nominating for Passenger Princess, which brings us to our final segment, Lost and Found. I think we have a couple of really big new questions. Mm -hmm. I don't think any mysteries were solved. Am I correct? A mystery was solved. Yeah. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Enlighten me. Illuminate so us. So the mystery that we solved was what did Jack do to his dad? Ah, yeah, okay. Because we asked that early on, I think in White Rabbit, there was this all this like, you did something to your father, Jack. How dare you? Sure. That's why he's in Australia drinking himself to death. Oh, that's right. That's right. And so now we know that Jack actually was the one that got his dad fired, essentially, because he outed his alcohol problem. Sure. Yeah, we also have more uh, questions as well. What questions do you have to ask? Uh, I don't know how to phrase them. Uh, what's the metal thing? Which, sorry, a slight spoiler. We could change that to what's in the hatch because okay. of my absorption of pop, pop culture. Let's just go ahead. And let's, let's not. Let's not tippy tap around not this. Coy. We know it's the hatch. Know what's it's in the, the hatch. hatch? We know it at this point. What's, what's in the hatch? What's in the hatch? What's in the hatch? Uh, and then also what happened to Charlie? Because there seems to be something more that we don't know yet that occurred to him other than being knocked out and kidnapped and hung. Kind of like, why is why can't he remember anything? Yeah, that why is he thing? comatose um, or convinced not to say anything, whatever. So just what happened to Charlie specifically, I think we can phrase it that way. Any other questions that we kind of haven't asked yet from last week, like... What's going on with Claire? Where's Claire? That's that was kind of asked last week. Yeah, right? we asked that last week. You know, what what does Ethan want with Claire? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's up with that psychic sash baby? I imagine he wants the baby. The only thing different between Claire and Charlie is impregnation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have any other questions, Madison, that we can add to Lost and Found? Uh, I don't think so. I think those those are all good ones. All right, so we added who's running Boone's business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who who <laughs> is running Boone's John business? needs to know. did Ethan take both Claire and Charlie? Or are there more people? Mm. I guess. I yeah. don't know. How will Hurley pay Walt $20,000 when they get <laughs> yes. back to the mainland? Yes, true. That's, gonna, <laughs> That's tough. He's going to owe down. Yeah, because Walt's coming back. He's like, Hurley going to fall down <laughs> if you don't give me my money. All right? That's right. Walt Walt's going to turn into a mobster. He don't play mm -hmm. all right that's right <laughs> i hope you enjoyed our coverage of episode 11 tune in later this week for our coverage of scott pilgrim versus the world our patron pick Hell for yeah. the week and then next week the holiday week uh i think we're going to be discussing uh likely gremlins on mm -hmm. the patreon yep. uh and on the main feed we've got the other sister for the patron week uh patron pick pause 
we're not remember we're we're bumping other sister a week and we're doing the best of uh, streaming things episode instead. Yes, I do remember that. I was attesting you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember where I can hop back in. Just say like, because you talked about Scott Pilgrim this week, just say like, and look forward next week to the holiday week. Yeah, and look forward next week to the holiday week where we're going to be covering Gremlins, likely, uh, on the patron side of things. And uh, instead of a patron pick for next week, we've got a very special episode, our highlights from this show for the year mm -hmm. that Steve and many of the patrons are putting together. Streaming uh, things wrapped. And of course. Streaming things Ooh. wrapped. Yeah. And of course, Lost episode 12. Mm -hmm. Or as they call it in Deutschland, Auf Deutschland, episode Zwolf. Zwolf. Just wanted mm -hmm. to throw that out there. Nice. Uh, that's all the time we've got right now. I've got to go return some videotapes. My name is Kit. My name's Madison. And I'm Steve. And this was Streaming Things Lost. In the sauce. Lost in the sauce. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Let's go. <laughs>